Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here. Uh, it's my first time in South Korea, and I'm very glad to see that there is such a big, vibrant community, a lot of XRPL enthusiasts and ambassadors and holders here. So it's, it's a great experience to be here and to be able to present what we've been working on over the last two years and a half now, which is the XRPL EVM sidechain, which pretends to unlock EVM programmability to the XRP ledger, which we think that it may be a, a major milestone uh, that could unlock a lot of possibilities that until right now, XRP and XRP Ledger has not been able to unlock uh, due to some isolation that it has. Uh, but I think this is something that it's going to change, not only with that, but through, through multiple initiatives over the next uh, few months. So I will talk a little bit about why this is important for both sides, for XRPL community members and for XRPL developers, why is important to have EVM smart contracts for all of them, and also for the other way, for all the broader EVM and Cosmos will see community that it's much bigger. We want to attract them to build using XRP, and, and we will show them what are the benefits of the XRP ledger and why they should take into account in order to build their, their products. So let's go through it, and let's go uh, with this first group. Let's go to the further EVM community. Uh, why? Uh, uh, an EVM the app, why any protocol should consider or want to tap into the XRP ledger if they are already accessing most of the other blockchains, right? Let's have a, a quick look. So there is four things that, for me, it's the, the most important ones uh, that you want to tap into. Uh, and first of all, it's, it's robust governance. Uh, I think this is one of the most undervalued uh, properties uh, in, in the common knowledge, let's say, but the market doesn't say the same. So XRP Ledger, it's built right before Bitcoin. It's one of the largest time running blockchains. It's been about 12 years now, and um, it has been operating uh, with all these 12 years without any failure, with uh, no single entity that it's fully operating it is a set of decentralized validators that has been making a lot of proposals and a lot of forks during all this time called amendments. And this is something very, very important. And if you see the market, the market values this a lot. Um, if you think the top 10, for example, chains by market cap, most of them are not super new chains and, and the most feature rich or the most innovative, rather they are some of the oldest chains that over the time that they've been surviving without failure, they provided this security, and which where most of the assets are, like 90% of the assets are on the top 10 chains, even if they are not the most fast, the most innovative ones. So I think that's something very important that you want to tap into uh, when you are uh, deploying your DA, right? Second of all, it's payments, uh, specifically Ripple as a company uh, over these years has been uh, engaging with many uh, important financial institutions and providing solutions like Ripple Payments that has processed about 30 billion in uh, cross-border transactions. So if you are building a DApp, which is uh, more focused on solving real case problems or financial institutions problems, and you launch uh, on the XRP Ledger, you can tap into all these partnerships that Ripple has built over the last time and all this trust. And this is something that it's definitely a huge advantage that I will say that none other blockchain has right now out there. Also, if you want to launch the app, you want to maximize your target community, your maximum liquidity possible. And XRP Ledger is not in a small one. It has about uh, more than 5 million active wallets. And to activate a wallet, you need to pay. So basically, that's a, a very important number. And it's processed about 2.6 billion transactions over this time, which means it's a very active community. So if you launch a, the app or a protocol, you don't want to miss all this, all this volume. It's about 30 billion now so in market cap. So the final, it's something that you should take a look on too. And also, in terms of liquidity, uh, XRP is one of the most liquid assets out there which is another very important thing. Some chains has a lot of market cap, but you make a couple of sales and this market cap is reduced to the half, right? So it's, it's very important to have liquidity and XRP Ledger launched the first DEX ever back in 2012 and has a liquidity hub 
where XRP and many other uh, market maker providers are supporting this currency and a couple, with a couple of others and can support your project there. And that's a very important thing as well in order to tap into, into the statistics. So this is for me the main four things that you may have interest in XRP Ledger if you are an EVM or an outside, let's say, blockchain protocol. Now let's go the other way. We, this is pretty obvious, right? If you are uh, an XRPL developer, smart contracts, it's a big topic, especially over the last few days, but over the last few years, there's been an incredible active discussion in the community. And why is this discussion so needed? So basically, uh, smart contracts are very important, programmability to allow developers build their products. And I will say that specifically EVM smart contracts are extremely important. We've seen some examples in the past of, uh, you know, blockchains that are launching their own smart contract language or smart contract format, etc. And they have some traction, but even if they are very good at it and even superior, one can arc rather than the Ethereum virtual machine, which not, it's not a crazy thing. But uh, it, it's, it, EVM has become so a standard that it's just not worth or very few people sees adoption. So wherever you have some kind of programmability that it's definitely desirable, you need to have EVM, otherwise you are outside of all the market trends. And we've seen that happening over the last years, for example, with NFTs, where all the craziness happened on, on NFTs. XRP Ledger didn't have it because it was not supporting EVM. By the time the amendment was out, NFTs has seen a, a significantly decrease in volume, and I think we totally missed this, this opportunity. So benefits of EVM are just that. Uh, smart contracts can be launched in any chain. You can go in Open Zeppelin and you have almost eight years of public smart contracts audited, fully compatible, integrated with almost any platform that you can deploy in seconds. So you want to have that for sure. For developers, it's also it becomes very cheap because as more people it's doing that, then you can redeploy uh, in the same format, reusing code from other developers, making minimal modifications, having all the tools and documentation that you need. So uh, it's very important. And interoperability is the same. When you launch your smart contract uh, in, in any other programmability framework, all right, you launch this smart contract. No one is using it. Now what you have to do, you need to talk to other, all the, the apps, all the protocols to provide support of it. It will take years to get, you know, just a, a tens of them to support you. But if you build an EVM contract, which is standardized, in, uh, instantly all top the apps and protocols in the world are already compatible with you, so they just need to list you. But the, the tech is there, right? If you launch an RC20 token, all the exchanges have support for RC20 tokens, all the DEXs, all the marketplaces. So it's just talking to them and they list you. If you launch your uh, specific token, they will need to put effort into developing this, which they will probably not going to do. And if they do, they will take a long time. So it's an it's extremely huge difference. And also for the community, we've said that there is 5 million active wallets on XRP Ledger, which is fine. But for XRPL developers, if you want to find mass adoption, you are not going to find it just on XRP Ledger. If you are building on EVM, you can tap in, uh, in wallets like Metamask that have seen 100 million plus wallets over different protocols. So, you know, the bigger brother community is there. So if you are launching an XRPL developer, you can start there, but you should expand to, to EVM compatibility in order to reach the maximum market size of the, of the industry, right? So the opportunities are there and are very clear, but uh, simply say it here for everyone. If you are at the app, you want to launch on the XRP LEBM, which is the combination that gets the best of both worlds for the, the single reason that XRPL in terms of uh, blockchain, if we miss Tether and USDC with JAR tokens, is the five largest, so you don't want to miss that for sure. Uh, it's EVM compatible, uh, thanks to the XRP LEVM, so you will have all this broader compatibility. And XRP is the native currency. For us, it could be easier to launch our own token and make some marketing and stuff, but we don't believe this is the right approach. XRP is one of the most liquid assets, and the main reason for what many people will be interested in tapping into this is already on all the exchanges, already with many on RAM, so you need to, to tap on that, and that's an important point. 
If you are a developer, that's even better. If you are a developer, you have a huge opportunity to launch products, to be the first market move strategy, uh, launching or copying even the apps that's been out there. So if we see, for example, Trader Joe, it's somehow a similar protocol that Uniswap that launched it on Avalanche. And they are now 130 million uh, worth of market cap. And same with Banky Finance with Aave. So I think there is a huge opportunity for developers now to find some of the most well-working protocols and build it on the EVM sidechain and be the first ones to take this market-wide launch. And I think that will be really great. And for XRPL users that couldn't use as many applications as they will probably would like all this time, now you will open the door to 40,000. I said 40,000 because it's the, the apps launched on Polygon on 2023 alone. So it's, there is hundreds of thousands of the apps that people will be able to access using XRP now, which is a huge uh, unlock. So very quickly, the fundamentals of the EVM sidechain. We are using Comet BFT. Obviously, it's a new chain, so we pick it the best technology out there to be on the cutting edge of the, of the industry. Comet BFT is a tender meme fork with better performance, one block finalization time, up to 60,000 transactions per second. And then we are using Cosmos SDK uh, as execution layer that provides uh, a suite of built-in models, and one of the models we put on top of it is the EVM. So now we are fully compatible with Cosmos, which is another huge and big ecosystem, and fully compatible with EVM. So with that, we achieve basically interoperability with, with everyone. And on top of these models, we built our own model, which is the proof of authority, which replicates the unique node list, or it's a very similar uh, consensus model uh, as the XRP ledger, we, where we want to be in harmony with the XRP ledger. And this is just my next slide. The network has a set of about 32 validators now. We are going to maintain something similar as the XRPL mainnet, because this is a sidechain, so basically it has to feel the same experience. Validator slot, it's open to everyone. 80% acceptance, so it will be very similar as the XRP Ledger mainnet. It's open to contributions. We have an organization on GitHub, XRP LEVM, and you can read and contribute there. XRP is the native currency. That's the most important feature of all. You can use XRP to pay for gas fees, smart contract deployments, etc., etc. The fees are very low. We are something in the middle of Polygon and Binance Smart Chain, so you can figure it out. It's like a uh, low fee uh, chain. And using XRP, which, as I said before, it's one of the most liquid assets. We've seen 3 billion 24 hours volume, so that's, that's unprecedented. And also, if you build on the XRP LEVM, you can go through all the XRP L programs, such as the grants, the accelerator, the hackathons that we had one in, in Korea this week, and it was very successful. So it's the same experience. XRP LEVM is first-class citizen. It's part of the ecosystem, and you will be able to choose the approach, whether if you need to launch on one side, the other, or in a cross-chain way to get the best of both worlds. Interoperability is full. That's the main reason of what we've done the XRP LEVM. As I said, uh, the native currency is XRP, and it's bridged through Axelar, which does, doesn't mean that Axelar is the unique bridge, but in order to bring the native currency, we had to pick one, and Axelar is production and battle tested ready, so XRP will be brought from Axelar, but still you can deploy on top of that any other centralized or decentralized bridge protocol for us. It's totally welcome for everyone. Uh, actually, for example, since we are using Cosmos SDK, we are automatically having IBC compatibility, so we are compatible with hundreds of other networks on the Cosmos ecosystem, which is very interesting. But any other smart contract can be launched for having any other EVM bridge on top of that. That's the main bridge we have for the native currency. It's bridge.xrplevm.org, but still you can build your own one. The explorer we are using for now, it's Block Scout, which is a great partner of us, and uh, you can visit there. I think it's a very good place to track all the activity on chain. And also, they have this section, the App Scout, which is kind of the app rather, and you can go there and track all the projects and start using all of them. Okay. And we're ready for mainnet. It, it feels like an eternity. It's been two years and a half, and obviously, we are still on DevNet, but it's not that the chain is not ready. We are waiting for Axelar. But the chain has been operating in this testnet for more than a year. We've passed now 42 proposals. So we have a good set of validators, well-coordinated. We have 
about 20 the apps available that you can start using and this number is only growing and it's been audited by the best. So as you can see, we've processed more than half a million transactions, 10 million blogs. There is 50,000 contracts deployed, 50,000 in testnet. It's unbelievable and I think the expectations are so high. We have audits by Certic and by Bishop Fox. Uh, all of them are corrected and are public out there. And if you want to join, you have different options. If you are a user and the very simple way to get started is you download MetaMask. Uh, if you are in EBM, you will be probably quite familiar with that. You go to the Bridge website and this will automatically include your network in MetaMask. You will get XRP from the faucet and you will get uh, bridge this XRP to the VM sidechain. So it takes a minute and you are there. After that, you can start deploying and using and interacting with the ecosystem. If you are a developer, I don't need to tell you the tools that are out there, but one of the best parts of Ethereum is that the tooling they have for developers. So you can go, for example, to Open Zeppelin and you can find hundreds of audited smart contracts. You can program in Solidity, you have Remix, you have Ganache, so you have all this tooling available for you to build. And uh, you can also join as a network sustainer, uh, as a validator, you have all the documentation there. And to find more things, please join Discord. This is all the conversations are happening and the official docs where you can find all the details of the last thing. So hope to see you guys on the XRP LEVM sidechain very soon and thanks for your attention.